Happy Sunday, y'all. We are so excited that you are here with us. Listen, we don't take it for granted that you have decided to worship with us this morning. Listen, this is some things that we want you to do. Make sure you have a sanctuary in your home, which simply means give God a praise right where you are so that he feels comfortable to move how he wants to move in your home. Number two, we want you to stay with us until the end. There's something special that happens when you watch from the beginning to the end. And so God wants to do special things. So don't miss anything. Make sure you stay tuned. And the last thing, drop a name in the comment. Tag somebody who can come and be invited to the worship experience that we're having. We're going to have a praise party in the comments. It's going to be the best that you have ever experienced. And we believe that God is going to do great things in your life, in your home, wherever you're watching, because great things are happening all around us, even though it may not be as visible to others. But because you look with the spiritual eye, you're going to be able to see what God is doing. We're about to go into worship. Real worship is going to lead us in worship. Sing loud. Give God a great big praise because we know that God wants to use you to make great change in the world. Have a great day. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship.
on, y'all. Let's bless the Lord right there. For God is great and God is good. He is mighty. He is worthy of all the praise. We lift him up. We glorify his name for he is great. He is greatly to be praised. Father, we bless you. You are worthy. You are awesome. We lift your name high in all the earth for you are a great God and a mighty God. We shout hallelujah to your name no matter where we are, finding ourselves in our, in our homes and we still give you a praise. Lord, you are awesome. Lord, you are worthy. You are great and greatly to be praised. We honor you today and we bless your holy and righteous name. Anybody got a hallelujah shout right where you are? Hallelujah to his name. He's such an awesome God. He's such a mighty God. And this is a great time to give him praise, even though we may not be in the church, even though we may not be in a conventional setting, but we are giving God praise and he is doing great things right where we are. Look, this morning we want to hop right in. Um, we're going to come from Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 through 16. Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 through 16. What an amazing time we had in worship this morning. I mean, real worship has just gone to the next level and we're excited about where God has taken them and that we get to worship and get impacted by what God is doing in their life. Amen. So we thank you for watching with us today. Listen, if you're here, let's start a praise party in the comments. Drop a hallelujah down there. Let us know that you are here. Tag somebody, invite them to it. We're going to live it up today. Um, we celebrated 4th of July yesterday, so I hope that you had a great day um, celebrating and was safe about it. But let's give a, a great big party, a praise party in the comments. So go ahead and tag somebody um, below and we're just going to celebrate the Lord together. We want to interact. We want that sense of community. We want this to be something that you are a part of, that you engage in. Not something you just watch, but something that when the Lord speaks to you, you drop it there. We engage and we celebrate together and we give God a great big praise. Amen. So we're coming from Colossians chapter three, verses 15 through 16. It says this. I'm going to be reading from the New Century Version. It says, let the peace that Christ gives control your thinking because you were all called together in one body to have peace. Always be thankful. Let the teaching of Christ live in you richly. Use all wisdom to teach and instruct each other by singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. We're going to use 15 in the A part of 16. So the first half, let the peace that Christ gives control your thinking because you are all called together in one body. Somebody say one to have peace. Always be thankful. And then we're going to use the A part of 16. Let the teaching of Christ live in you richly. If you can pray with me under the topic of the missing piece, the missing piece. God, we thank you for the opportunity to come together and, and dig into your scripture and to understand your word. Father, we ask that your presence be felt in our homes, in our cars, at work, wherever we are. And we're listening to this, Lord, that you will just speak to our hearts in a great way that we won't miss you. But God, we are attentive. Move the distractions out of the way so that we can hear you, feel you, and see you in a great way today. We ask for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so we're excited, man, about what God is doing. And we are still in the midst of living in times that are different than what we've ever seen. We're living in times where the rules are ever-changing, where we have this thing going on, that thing going on, how to react to this and all these different things. We went from being able to hug someone like and be all up on each other and have a worship service that was just regular, our normal. You come together, you got a greeter, they hug each other, they give each other high fives and all this kind of things to we went from that interaction to quarantine where you can't touch anybody else. They talk about you can't even talk without a mask on to somebody else. You're not even supposed to leave your home. You're supposed to be in quarantine, limited to only the necessities, not being able to go out, you know, and then they move on to, yeah, you can wear a mask when you go out. You can go to this place, but not that place. This place is closed. It's modified closed. It's, you got to go here. You got to go there and all these different things. And then we approach the fact where you can have five people in a room. You can have 10 people in a room and now you can have 15 people in a room. And now you can have 250 people in a room and all these different things and socially distance. And we have have all these different changes that are happening in our life. We approach 
our school year with many questions of what that will look like. A lot of parents have a lot of questions about how school is going to look and is it going to be appropriate for my child to go back to the setting that they were used to and will I be sending them back or will I be looking for alternative ways and will, you know, what will college look like and how will my family function in this new season? We've experienced economic changes where we've seen the stock market do crazy things and we've seen it start to come back up and we've seen people say, listen, you don't need to be so secure in the fact of where it is because changes are still coming. There's another peak coming and all these different things, but we continue to navigate. And then we have on top of the whole mix, we have the rise of the awareness of racism. And so then we have how do we go about making change? How do we go about making impact? How do we do what God has called us to do in this season? And all this is still mixed in with the regular uh, hustle and bustle of life and trying to figure out this new normal of interacting and working virtually from home and being able to make sure our kids have what they need and planning birthdays, but it has to be a birthday drive through and all these different things come into our world during this season. And God has been faithful and he's brought us to this point. But with all these points, it makes it very challenging to navigate because the belief systems in our world are so broad. Before we had a sense of normal and we knew how to operate in that normal and there was a sense of normalcy across the board or at least within our cultural context of the people that we interacted with, we knew what the belief system was. But this season has interrupted the belief system to where you don't know what your neighbor's belief system is, where you don't know if they believe that you should wear a mask or not. You don't know if they're OK with hugging or not. You don't know if they um, have went out of their homes during this season or whether they have stayed home during this season. You have gone through economic uncertainty, so you think that you have a job going back, but you're not really sure if you have a job going back because you don't know their financial situation and if they have to downsize or if they're steady or if they're looking at expanding. You don't know how to handle the racism, racism issues because you don't know if your neighbor is truly aware of what's going on or they believe that it doesn't exist this or you don't know if they're going to get offended if you talk to them about something or ask them a question and so the rules have changed the belief systems are so broad and the solution is one thing to this person and one thing to that person and you have the the you have the information you have the resources but there's still something missing to the whole thing of moving forward and we are hesitant to do fully what God has called us to do because there's so many questions and the belief systems are so broad it brings us to a place where we go okay I have these things but there's something missing Paul who has written two-thirds of the New Testament is writing this book of Colossians right here he's writing from his first imprisonment in Rome this is where he also wrote Ephesians, Philippians, and some others. He wrote in this theme of this book as the, the supreme, all-efficient Christ. That's what he is. He is pushing in this book that Christ is supreme and he is all-efficient, that everything that you need is in Christ. This is the, the uh, he's speaking to the, the syncretism of the, the context of their culture where they have mixed, they have fused together Jewish legalism, Greek philosophy, and Oriental mysticism. And so they have fused all these different beliefs together to create a way of living. And he's speaking to them to let them know that, listen, fusing all these different pieces together to make your own standard is not the way that Christ is the way. He's the head of the church and he is the all supreme, all efficient Christ. And he needs to be who rules in your life. And so he's speaking to a people who have taken a little bit from this and a little bit from that and a little bit from this and made their own way of thinking and their own way of living. And he says, no, we must understand that Christ is the head of the church. and He must be the ruler in our lives. And so when we get into the scripture here at 15, it says, let the peace that Christ gives control your thinking because you were all called together in one body. Somebody say one to have peace. Look at your neighbor, say, let it rule. Let it rule. Let it rule. See, the one thing about this, he says, let the peace that Christ gives control 
your thinking. I love one, one version that says, it is my umpire. Peace is my umpire. Peace is what gauges what I allow in my life. The peace of Christ is what tells me yes and no. It is what gauges me. It's what, what limits what comes into my life because if it doesn't bring me the peace that Christ brings, then it's not for me in this season. You must intentionally focus on the things above rather than what you are seeing with your natural eye. We have to focus on things above. We cannot let our natural circumstances cause us to deny what Christ wants to do in our life. We can't let the rise of what we see in the news deter our faith in what Christ is doing in the earth. We must intentionally focus on the things above rather than what we're seeing with our natural eye. We must rehearse the past victories to bring us peace to understand that Christ will see us through this current situation. That Christ has been faithful every single time before. He has seen us through times where we didn't know we were going to make it. So we have to rehearse the past victories in order to build up our faith to have peace that he will see us through this as well. Amen. And so once we get free on the inside, there's only a matter of time before the freedom permeates our outside. That if we get free in our spirit, there's only a amount of time, a certain amount of time before we get free in our physical. Because because the word of God deals with us on the inside first. It deals with our heart. It deals with our mind. It deals with our spirit. It deals with our soul. And all of a sudden, when a change happens there, then we begin to see it on the outside. I was having an interview the other day with a woman who had lost over 100 pounds. She said it's all mental because when the change happens here, then we start to see the change on the outside. And it's the same way with the word of God. When we allow God to convict our hearts and we really come humble to him and say, Lord, deal with me with this. Let me see how you see. Let me see how you see people. Let me see how you see the situation. Now we have a place in our heart that we can move forward and begin to develop on the inside because the change happens on the inside first. And then we see the fruit of it on the outside. People start talking about, oh, you you different. Oh, you talk different. You you act different. You you become it. And it's not just a change of behavior. It's a heart change. And out of the heart change comes a lasting change on the outside. And so when we set our minds on things above, you can have peace in the middle of a trial or circumstance. It is not the fact that trials and circumstances will never come. They will come. He talks about in this world, you will have trouble. It is something that will happen. No matter if you're black, white, old, young, in the country, in the city, you will have trouble. If you are Jewish, Muslim, believe that the trees are going to save you. Don't think that anything ever exists. You just came from a plant. Whatever your thought process is, whoever has lived in this world has had trouble. But this is the difference when you are a Christian, when you are built and centered on God, is that in the middle of a circumstance, in the middle of trouble, in the middle of a trial, you can have peace. How can you do that, pastor? Because I know that I am not my own. I belong to him and he works all things together for my good. And when I have someone who is above me, who is the ultimate authority, not just in my life, but in this world, I understand that he will not allow anything to cause me to be set back to the point where I cannot fulfill my destiny. That anything that left me wasn't for me in this season, but he still has me in his hand. So I let the peace of God rule in my life, because as long as I move with him, I have peace. And if I have that peace, then I know that I'm in line with what he's telling us to do. Paul is a witness to this because he is in prison and is still ministering and fulfilling the call that's on his life. He is writing this letter while he is in prison prison. Most people in prison would be throwing up, uh, they call it sackcloth and ashes, which is pretty much like I'm in a sad state and it's like, oh, woe is me. Here I am trying to do something for the Lord and now I'm in prison and I can't do what I need to do, God. You just set me back. Why don't you let me free? When you let me out, I'll preach. When you let me out, I'll say what you want me to say, but I can't do anything now because I'm stuck. No, Paul said, listen, I'm going to let the peace of God rule and even though I find myself in prison, I'm still going to write these letters to fulfill the call 
all this on my life because he never said stop. He just has me in a position right now that's causing me to be innovative. And for somebody, that is a word for you in this season is that he never told you to stop. He just called you to be innovative in this season. Though my physical is limited, the call of God is not limited at all on my life. And I can speak from this physical place, but the spirit of God will take the word of God to places that my body can't reach. But I must do what he's called me to do in this season in spite of what the season has dealt to me. You understand that God will never allow the devil to touch what is necessary for your destiny. God will never allow the devil to touch what is necessary for your destiny. See, he will allow the devil to touch certain things, but the things that the devil touches are not necessary for your destiny. Let's go to the garden because there's so many lessons in the Garden of Eden is that he gave Adam and Eve all these different trees, a rain in the Garden of Eden. And the enemy was only in what wasn't necessary for them. He says, listen, don't pay no attention to that tree over there. Don't eat of that tree. You don't need that tree. And the enemy lived in what they didn't need. But because they thought what they didn't need was more attractive. So what's so special about over there? I don't need that. But hmm, let me go look over there. That's where they found the enemy. They found the enemy in what they didn't need. And then they, be had, they begin to have a conversation and an exchange. And we know the story of how they ate of the fruit and maybe disobeyed God. But here's the deal. The enemy only lived in what you don't need. He operates in fear. Jesus says, I did not give you the spirit of fear. So that's where he lives. But many times we visit where he lives and there's an exchange that happened and then we become a part of where he lives and we take residence in a place that God didn't position us to be. And he says, listen, I want for you to understand that whatever the enemy touches in your life wasn't necessary for where you were headed. Oh, my goodness. If we look at our life, people are like, oh, man, the enemy touched my finances. Oh, well, listen, hey, do you need your finances to be at this point to fulfill what God has on your life? Because I promise you that anything that you need to fulfill the vision vision that God that God has placed on your life, he will bring in provision to make sure it goes forward. My people perish. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. And he also says where there is no vision, the people perish. And so when we get a vision for where we're going and God, we ask God for so many things. And he says that is not necessary for the vision that you have. If your vision requires it, I will bring provision to your vision. This is why he says, write the vision down and make it plain. Upon tablets that those may read it, may run with it. Those who are running with it may be bringing finances to get it done. Those who run with it may be bringing you uh, resources to get it done. Those who run with it may be bringing you uh, strength to get it done and, and support to get it done. But you must make it plain. Amen. And that he will never allow the devil to touch what is necessary for your destiny. Amen. Look at your neighbor. Say, always be thankful. Always be thankful. In the scripture here, in the next part of that, he says, always be thankful. We must not allow what doesn't bring us peace to take residence in our life. And we have to be at a place where we're willing to let it go. Somebody say, let it go. We must always be thankful because if we're not thankful, we will keep things that's not necessary because we'll feel like we don't have enough. You ever met somebody that holds on to things so long and you say you don't need this and it's actually stopping you from getting to your goal. But because they're so afraid they're going to miss something that they're going to need it one day that they hold on to it. But it's not bringing them joy in this season and they would get more joy if they would just let it go. And so they aren't thankful for what they do have. They're scared of what they do have or what they will miss in the next season. Therefore, they're scared to let it go. But if I'm thankful for whatever I have, talks about if in every situation I find myself content, I'm not satisfied. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna keep pressing, but I can be content with a lot. I can be content with a little, but whatever I have, I understand that God has allowed that to be in my life because it's necessary for my next move, amen. And so whatever I need in this season is what I have because God supplies all my need according to his riches and glory. And many times you say, Lord, I don't have what I need. And he says, yes, you do. 
you have exactly what you need to get to the next step in this season. Well, I don't have enough finance. Yes, you do. You have exactly what you need. Now, maybe we have mismanaged our resource. That's a whole nother message. But Lord, the God, God says, I have given you what you need. And so when you have and you realize and you have the eye that Christ has and say, let me look at what I have, because what I have is what I need. And the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That means he's already supplied my need. So let me look at it through the eyes that Christ looks at it, because I may look at it as only a pot of oil. He may look at it as the flow that will fill multiple vessels. So I must understand that my gifting, that my resources, that my voice, that my influence, that my finance, that my children, that my family, that my house, that my location, that my business, that everything that God has given me is enough for this season to get me to the next. See, the pot didn't look like the full vessels that the woman poured out later, but it was exactly what she needed to get to the next level. But what she needed to do was seek out the word of God from the man of God. Woo! And so when we begin to ask God and say, listen, what do I have? And show me through your eyes and be thankful for whatever I have. Woo! Be thankful for whatever you have. And when you are thankful, you set yourself up to move into the next season and get what God has called you to get. This is a journey of faith because we trust Christ's plan is more valuable than what we lost. We got to be able to let stuff go. And when we are thankful for what we have, we position ourselves for the season he wants to bring us into. And here's the other thing about thankfulness. Thankfulness is special because you can see thankfulness. When somebody is thankful for something, you can see it. Although we all communicate different. Somebody may give a card. Somebody may give a gift. Somebody might be all eccentric and say, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Or they might send a comment on Facebook or they might post something. But thankfulness is visible. You can see it within someone when they are thankful and grateful for what they have or what you have blessed them with or the presence that you have come into their life with. They are thankful for you and you can see it. Thankfulness is visible. You can't just say I'm thankful. You can't just think you're thankful. If you are truly thankful, then you will give God a praise. If you are truly thankful, you will honor that person. If you are truly thankful, you will sacrifice so they will know how you feel. We must always be thankful. That means there should be a visible sign that we are thankful for what we have. Yeah, yeah. And see, the thing about it is most people don't miss it until they're gone. And I'm from the country. They'd be like, you don't miss the water until the well run dry. <laughs> and so when it's gone, that's when people say, oh, my goodness, I should have been I should have appreciated it more. Somebody said like this, you don't know how much shade a tree provides until it's chopped down. Don't let this moment, whoo, don't let this moment pass you by. Don't let this, this season of being able to spend time with your family be one that you have taken for granted. I know we've been in this situation for a little while and you getting used to being at home, but don't, under, don't miss the fact of how special this is because I don't want you to get back into the hustle bustle of life and realize you should have did more during this season. I don't want you to get there and get back to working on the regular and getting your school, the people are getting back to their sports and activities and all this different stuff and you realizing that, man, I should have took more advantage of that time when we had it at home. And, and now that the tree is cut down, I realize how much shade quarantine provided in our life, how much shade from the heat, from the world, from the circumstances of life that quarantine provided for us to connect. And we missed it. We let it go without fully getting what it needs. I'm thankful. I may not have the hours I used to have, but I'm thankful. I may not have the resources I used to have, but I'm thankful. I may not be as active as I once was, but I'm thankful. I might have lost some engagements because of this, but I'm thankful. Anyway, I'm thankful because what you have blessed me with is enough to take me to the next level. And here we are when we get to the next part in the scripture. It says this in 16. Let the teaching of Christ live in you richly. Let the teaching of Christ live in you richly. Richly. Look at somebody say live richly. Live richly. Look at somebody else say live richly. I know I'm getting to the top of the people that might be in your house, but just find something else to say live richly. Live richly. The word of God has to be able to invade every part of your life without hindrance and limitation. Woo! Let the teaching of Christ live in you 
richly. The one thing about being rich, you know what I mean, and when you have access is the fact that there's not too many things that hinder you. See, the Bible says this about money. He says that money answers all things. Some of my people say money can't buy you happiness. That's the truth. But money answers all things. So that means the things of life can be answered with money. I tell my kids this, that you need to fix with your hands what you can fix with your hands and pray in the spirit about what you can't fix with your hands. Understand that sometimes people are praying about things that money can fix. I don't need to pray about the AC being broken. I need to have the money to fix it. Now, I might pray about the provision in the way that God wants me to go about getting the resources to have the money to answer the thing. But the thing is not spiritual. The thing can be answered with money. And so if I have the money, the things won't hinder me because money answers all things. So if we take that principle and put it into our lives when it talks about let the teaching of Christ live in you richly is that there are no limitations to where it can go. You understand that sometimes we have the word of God in our life, but we won't let it invade our attitude. Woo. We'll let it invade how we handle our money. We'll manage and we get, make sure we have our tithe and we make sure we have our offering and we give alms and then we budget out the rest and we do that and we let it invade that space. But we won't let it invade how we talk to our spouse, how we talk to our children, how we talk to our boss, how we, how we work and how we do those different things because that's a room that the word can't live in my house. It's like when somebody comes to visit, visit your house and they say make yourself at home but they won't allow you to have access to every room. Then you also know that there are limitations that I can make myself at home in the living room, but I do not have access to go into the refrigerator and get what I want. I can make myself at home in the living room, but I can't go into their bedroom. So I'm not truly at home. I'm allowed to be comfortable in this area. And many times that's what we've done with the word of God is that we've allowed him to be comfortable in this area area. I'm allowing you to be comfortable in my life on Sunday, but on Monday, that's my domain. I'm allowing you to be the word of God and live richly in my life inside of how I treat people, but I won't allow it to be the word of God and live richly in my life on how I view myself because I won't forgive myself and let go my past mistakes. We must allow the word of God to be living so richly in our life that he has access to every part of us and there are no limitations to where the word of God can go. Therefore, if my brother and sister is hurting, that the word of God speaks to my heart and says to have compassion. He says, I become all things to all men that I might win some to the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so he talks about that and then we must understand that we must allow the word of God to live in us richly. There is no limitation. And this is a prayer that will start you on that journey. God, show me to me. Woo. God, show me to me. When you pray that prayer, get ready because he will show you to you. And the attitude that we must have is that, Lord, how do you want me to change? Because when he starts to show you to you things that your friends have told you, things that your spouse have told you, things that your children may have said on the slide that was actually some truth, but you didn't want to receive it from the person who said it. God will show you a reflection of yourself and you'll be like, oh, oh that ain't that ain't me, is it? And he's like, I'm God. I do not lie. It is you. <laughs> and you need to come to grips that this is you and humble yourself and say, Lord, teach me how to change. I got to let the word of God live in me richly. It has to take up residence in every area of my life, because when we do that, we begin to see what he calls us to see. We begin to live how he called us to live. And so in the midst of the changes, tests, challenges that we face, we must realize that we can have all the resources, all the information, all the details. But if we don't have the peace of God, then that ain't it. Many times we have people who have navigated their season based off the facts. And I get it. I'm a thinker. I understand that the facts are important. And that we make our decisions based off of what other people are doing. I get it because sometimes we feel as though they're more knowledgeable. So we follow them. 
I get it. I understand that there's a lot of different questions about what's going to happen in this next season. Am I going to send my kid back to school? Am I going to go get that surgery with the hospitals like this? Am I going to go and put my money in this investment when I know that things are kind of shaky right now? Though things look like it may be picking up, I'm still not sure what's going to happen. Do I go out without my mask on? Do I go out with my mask on? Do I go out at all? Do we go back here? Do we go back there? I don't know. And you're looking at all the resources and you're watching the news and you're trying to grab from here and there. But here's the thing about it. If you're Christian, you must be led by the peace of God, that he is the umpire in your life that dictates to you whether or not this is Christ filled or not. When you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added to you that when we seek him, that he will speak to our hearts and give us peace about the next move. That overwhelming peace is the presence of God and saying, this is what I want you to do because we must understand that he is organized. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. So he has a certain rhythm and he's laid out how you're supposed to live. And he does his thing. And when we have peace, it means that we're in step with where he tells us to be in step. And many times we have so many resources and we try to make our own way with our own decision, but we haven't first sought the Lord and we ask him, where do you want us to be? And he said, okay, I'm over here. I'm just waiting for you to come my way and lift up a prayer to me so that I can communicate to you to let you know that this is the next step you're supposed to take. And when we fit just right, it's like a puzzle piece. It's like it just slides right in. It didn't look like it was going to fit in the beginning. But after all the other pieces are laid out, it goes, oh, this was important. And it fits right in. It jointly fits right in to make one picture. Because what what's happening is, is Christ is building his kingdom in the earth. And as we step and we move in the peace of God, because we understand that when we move in the peace of God, we fit into the puzzle that he's creating. Then the puzzle is not about the puzzle. It's about the picture that it creates. And he has the picture of the kingdom that he got from uh, from heaven and he's building it in the earth. But he needs for us to be who he's called us to be and not so much of our own way, but what he's called us to do. This is why having and the information and the resources ain't enough. You got to have a piece of God about the decision you're going to make. Because he says, listen, I know you look a little bit like this other piece, but you don't, you're not cut the exact same way. You don't understand. And I'm the one that knows the picture. I'm the one that's putting things together. And I need for you, I know you want to be on the edge, but you're not an edge piece. I need to put you over here. And I know you cut a little different, but you've cut for a reason. And I'm going to sit you right here and you're going to bring the fullness of the picture. You ever been in a puzzle and miss some pieces and you can't really see what it is all the way because there's some pieces out of place? Don't be the piece that's out of place. Don't be the piece that's out of place. Be the piece that's supposed to be jointly fit together with each other. And the thing about a puzzle piece is that it's not perfect. A square puzzle piece, perfect square puzzle piece, doesn't fit together with anybody else. It doesn't lock in. It is because I understand that there's a deficit. I understand that I'm cut in a certain place. But where I'm cut and I'm limited, there's somebody in the body of Christ that fills it. And when we get joined together, there's something about the strength. Because when you are locked together, because I had a deficit and you had an extra, we locked together. Together and now we're fitly joined and we give a picture to the world of what kingdom is like in heaven. Somebody needs to understand that your limitation is not a downfall, but it's the fact that I need somebody else. And when Christ shows me to me, when God speaks to me and says, listen, this is where you lack, but you have a friend that is abundant in that area and you need to humble yourself and allow them to help you. And then you link together and the love that is exchanged shows the world that even though we are different, even though we come from different walks of life, I need you and you need me and we are jointly fit together and the kingdom of God the picture of heaven begins to be released in the earth listen I know you Republican and I know I'm Democrat and I know that you may be this and I know you may be that but listen we are fitly joined together because before we are any of those things we are first the kingdom of heaven we are first Christian and so we get past our differences because there is something that I need to get the work done that you have and there's something that you have that I need and we link together and we begin to move forward in the things of Christ. So many limitations and the love of God has stopped because of things that don't matter. Woo! We must get past our differences. We must get past our shortcomings. We must get past how we view ourselves. We must get past how we view others. We must link first because we are first his. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Oh my goodness. He talks about the peace. It is, my, it is the umpire in my life. And there are some people 
who have missed the peace of God being in their life because they've allowed their intellect to lead them. They've allowed their, their passion to lead them. But there are some of you out here who have been searching and you've been mixing theories. You've been pulling from this thought and pulling from that religion and pulling from this person's uh, convictions and pulling from that person's convictions. And you've been pulling from all these different places, trying to create a standard in your life that has nothing to resemble what Jesus wants to do in your life. And though you feel like you are a good person, there's something missing. And Christ has sent me here today to let you know that he wants your heart. And, and you can't mix, you can't pull from over here and pull from over there and create something that's going to fulfill the void that's in your life. The missing piece in your life is him. This is why through the midst of this, you, you may, your, your finances may not have been touched, but you still want that peace. Nobody in your family got sick, but you still want that peace. Because Jesus brings a peace into your life that only he can feel. And he wants you to understand today that he is here for you and he wants you to choose him. He wants you to understand that he died on the cross for you and he wants you to accept him into your life. And there are some people in here that need to recommit their heart to Christ. And it's the fact that you, you need to recommit the pursuit of Christ, the pursuit of what he's called you to. You need to, to renew the commitment to study his word and let the word of God rule in you richly to have full reign in your life, to come out of the comfort zone and move forward. And there's some people who are in here that just need prayer for peace in the middle. That you've you found yourself in challenging times and you just need peace. You need God to have a peace to take up residence in your heart to show you what the next direction is. And I want to pray for you today. And if that's you, you need to accept Jesus Christ into your heart. We're going to start with you first so that you can make the best decision that you can ever make and accept him into your heart. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, that's when the change happens. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. Repeat after me, say, Dear Jesus, come into my heart and save me. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin and I accept you into my heart. I believe you rose on the third day. I renounce Satan and make my salvation real to me and lead me by your Holy Spirit. If you prayed that prayer, you made the best decision, but we're not gonna say amen yet, we're gonna move on. And, and for those who need a recommitment to Christ, those who need to recommit to their devotional life, Lord, I thank you for them. And I speak the blessing over them and, and the power of God over them that what has caused them to fall off before, destructive cycles, distractions, the enemy doing things in their life, I break the power of it now and I ask, Father, that this day when they recommit to you, they say, I'm committed to you and they make the decision to come back to your word. They make the decision to come back to prayer with you. They make the decision to be all that you have called them to be. That Lord, that you will allow your presence to be so strong in their life that they will know that you are real and long to be with you every morning in prayer and worship. And I thank you for that. And I thank you for those who need peace in the middle. God, I ask, Father, that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will rest, rule, and abide in their heart and in their home and will permeate every area of their life. God, that there will be a sense of peace, e even in the midst of the storm, even in the midst of unsurety, in the midst, in the midst of what we are facing, in the midst of all the challenges and not knowing how things are going to work out. God, that there will be peace and they will have peace in the middle. Lead them and guide them by your peace. Let peace be the umpire in their life. When they are not at peace about it, let them have the boldness to let it go. And Lord, I thank you that you lead them and guide them in your truth. Let healing, deliverance, and all these things be evident in every life of the believer. And so I thank you for it, and I bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Can we give God a praise right there? Can we lift them up and celebrate him? Can we give him the glory? For he is great and greatly to be praised, amen. He is great and greatly to be praised, amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer and you have accepted Christ into your life, please text us right away. Email us right away. We want to get some information to you. You don't have to do this life alone. We are here with you and we want to support you in this walk that you are making with Christ because it's going to change your entire life. And so we want to be there as you walk this thing out. Join up, link up, link up with us. We have some things we want to get to you. Listen, if you want to give, you can give. 
it is a great opportunity to sow into the word of God. It's a great opportunity to, to bless uh, his kingdom work in the earth. We are blessing lives. We are touching people. We are doing what God has called us to do in this season. And so if you want to sow and be a partner and support, that's great. But I'm, more importantly, I want you to be obedient to what God has called you to do. Yes, it will bless us on the back end to be able to do more in the community, but it will bless you on the front end being obedient to God. And so if he's speaking to your heart and saying to sow, trust him. Trust him. There's a peace about it and you should do it. Amen. And so this is what I want to charge you with this week. Let it rule. Let the peace of God rule in your life. When the umpire says it's out, it's out. And if peace in your life is saying, listen, you know what? This person got to go. This thing is not a good decision. It's got to go. Nope, not that application that got to go. Let the peace of God rule in your life. Let peace be your umpire. Always be thankful. Be thankful for everything in your life and live richly. Let the word of God rule everything in your life. Let him have free reign. Let him rule richly. Live richly in Christ. And I believe that God's going to do great things in your life. We want to see you. We can't wait to connect with you. Email us, text us. That is a real person. It's not some computer automated stuff. We want to talk to you. We want to get connected with you. You are special and God has great plans for your life. Amen. You have an amazing week. God bless you.